sorry, I just watched a movie uh, where most of the people, or at least the main character, had a western accent. So my accent is a little bit off today. I don't know why, couldn't tell you. Sorry about that too, the cat is clawing the cat or the chair. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk today, I'm going to talk about um, social development, stages of, parts of, yada yada. We're going to start with attachment. These are the emotional ties that form between people. Um, attachment is essential for survival. If a kid does not become attached to their parents and they have no sense of home, then they're going to wander off and eventually they will be killed. That is the way of life, the way of nature, whatever you want to call it. Uh, by four months, by the time a child is four months old, they will prefer to be near their mother. Um, next uh, comes stranger anxiety. By eight months, infants develop a fear of strangers. This would explain why if they are uh, around a family member they have met, never met, or say you take an eight-month-year-old to a family reunion, they may stay. They will probably stay nearest to their parents because they do not they're nervous about those other people. Um, they become more distressed when strangers try to touch them. This would be like someone they do not know trying to pick them up regardless of whether it's a friend of the parents or not. Uh, next comes separation anxiety. Um, also about the same age, infants become distressed if they fear that their parent is leaving them. Uh, why? Well, they feel defenseless. They are small. They're big. Everything around them is bigger than them. Uh, they view their gar their parents as their protectors, their guardians. You know, call it what you want. Uh, they consider them their protectors. So therefore, their parents start leaving. They feel weak and unprotected in a world full of huge stuff. Everything's bigger than them. So they're going to obviously feel nervous and really scared. Uh, parents will notice this when they leave for work and they maybe have to leave their child at home. Uh, You'll notice that they're stop crying. Uh, next comes con contact comfort. This is the instinctual need to touch something soft or be touched by something soft. Uh, you see a lot of kid, uh, little kids with a blankie, uh, binky, something like that. That's their c their contact comfort. They feel uh, comfortable and really safe when they're touching it. Uh, in my case, I had a blankie. Um, and I probably did not let go of it until I was about six, no, I'll call that around six or seven. I still, I didn't carry it around with me all the time, but yes. Imprinting. Um, this does not take, uh, really, this does not really take hold in humans. They do not have a critical period. A uh, process by which some animals form immediate attachments during a critical period. Um, biggest example of this, ducks and geese. Uh, all the ducklings and all the goslings, they all follow the ga the mother. Um, that's just the attachment for you. Or the imprinting, excuse me. Um, what type of parent would you be? There are two types. Authoritative. This is combining warmth and positive strictness with po po bleh, excuse me. Combining warmth with positive strictness. This is like uh, spank uh, let's see here. Like scolding your kid for maybe breaking a plate. But you do it in a way that they're not feeling threatened, that they know that you love them, and that they're uh, just being told not to do it again because they're concerned for your safety or something along those lines. Uh, children are more independent and achievement oriented. Um, these are, I would say, my, like my parents. Um, uh, I am very independent. I prefer to do things by myself and I am. If I set my eyes on a goal, I will probably work to achieve that goal. Like right now, my goal is to succeed in college. I will more than likely succeed in college, probably without really trying. <laughs> uh, the second type is authoritarian. Obli they believe in obedience for th its own sake. Basically, you better do the what the hell I say, or you're going to get yourself hurt. Uh, probably by me. Um, they expect their children to follow what they do do as they say without question. Um, this would be really bad for the two-year-old period because obviously little kids tend to say why all the time and um, those children uh, become 
resistant and less friendly as well as less spontaneous. This is also in a way very me because I uh, I have a external I have my facade that I show the world and then I have the real me that very few people have ever seen. I am not very friendly to people I do not know and I am very un I am probably the exact opposite of spontaneous. Uh, next will come child abuse and negligent causes. Stress, poverty, and employment. Stress will lead to in poverty employment. Um, history in the family. Um, if uh, child abuse tends to run in the family, it will typically continue in the family. Um, acceptance of violence as a coping mechanism. Uh, this is like the parent who's stressed at work and they beat on their kids because, well, it makes me feel better and they'll understand. They will not. Believe me, they will not. Uh, lack of attachment to the children. This is like the mothers that drop their child in a dumpster, and there is no excuse for that, by the way, at all. Um, substance abuse. Um, this is something else that is t it will tend to run in families. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. You have, um, I would not say an increased chance, but an increased susceptibility to it. Say your parent is a uh, alcoholic, you have an inc probably have an increased susceptibility to alcoholism. Um, rigid attitudes about child rearing. Um, I, for example, um, I will. I have fairly rigid ideas about what I want to do with my kids when I have them. This is also counteracting the fact that I do not actually want kids that bad. Um, I know my personality, and I really, really, really do not want to have a child that I pass it on to. I would never recover from that level of guilt. Um, okay, that's it for child abuse and neglect causes. Um, Self-esteem. Unconditional positive regard. Parents love and accept their children for who they are, no matter how they behave. So this is your parents who will, you know, they you still love your kids after they've thrown a huge tantrum, they've torn up the entire grocery store, but you still love them. They grow up to be just magnificent people. Um, my parents, no matter how much they beat me with a knot hold board, splintery board, I always knew that my parents loved me, and that stays with me. Um, conditional positive regard. Parents show their love only when children behave in certain acceptable ways. If your chil if the these people, if their children do not behave as they want them to, then they do not lo they do not show that they love them. They do not love them. They probably do not love them. Period. These children grow up to be very, I would not say dependent, but very closed. They do not want to have things to do with people, and usually, um, they do not. I don't know. How to finish that statement? I apologize. But, um, yeah, that, uh, that will pretty much close this up, and I'm probably hitting close to ten minutes, so, uh, I gotta get off of here so that I can actually publish it on YouTube. So, um, yeah, uh, feedback's great, and, um, until next time, you know, tune into my other videos, uh, if you have a topic you want me to cover, I can take a break from this series and, uh, go to that. So, if you have questions, please ask them. I will answer them. Uh, other than that, uh, until next time. Yeah, keep it in mind.